Hey guys, Dr. Will Adams here, chiropractic physician at Miami Spiner Performance. We are here for part two of our at-home mobility series. Last time we went through hip internal rotation, a very important movement for, for the lower body, for running, for squatting, for martial arts, and a whole host of other activities. Today we're gonna be talking about shoulder internal rotation. And again, this is another one that is very often limited on people. We see a lot of CrossFit athletes, power lifters, bodybuilders, and they come in and they're limited in internal rotation of their shoulders, so they feel discomfort during exercises such as bench press, dips, push-ups, and things like that. So this is one of the motions we wanna work on very consistently, especially with athletes that are doing a lot of upper body pushing, gymnastics, barbell work, and things like that. The first thing that we're gonna do, of course, is we're going to assess our internal rotation on both shoulders. So I'll turn to the side here. The way that we're gonna assess this, we're gonna put our arm at 90 degrees just like this, so we're gonna start in actually external rotation. And I'm just going to rotate my shoulder all the way down. As far as I can. And I'm being very strict with the motion. So of course I could do something like this. I could poke my head forward and I could gain more motion, but that doesn't do us any good, right? So we wanna go all the way down into internal rotation. We're not elevating the elbow. We're just rotating that shoulder as far as we can. So we know where we're at. We're gonna to go to the other side. Again, starting here at 90 degrees, and we're gonna rotate that shoulder all the way in, as far as we can go, just until we start to feel a pull and we're not gonna cheat. So we're gonna be honest with our range of motion. And that's gonna be our starting point. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna do three different variations. We're going to do some CARS, or controlled articular rotations for the shoulder, as well as the shoulder capsule. We're going to do a pales rails from internal rotation. And we're going to finish off with an exercise that I call prone swimmers. And that's going to be to kind of tie everything together. So with the shoulder, we're going to start first with just the capsular cars. We're going to do three of each, okay? The first one, we're going to have our arms extended out like this. We're going to keep our shoulders nice and relaxed. We're going to make strong fists, glue our feet into the ground. We're going to rotate those knuckles all the way down and in. Feeling the full range of internal rotation, then we're going to go back into external rotation, really feel the shoulder capsule work. You should feel the back of your shoulder working. I'm going to keep my elbows nice and extended. I'm not overarching the back. I'm not moving my head. Rotate all the way in. And then I'm going to rotate all the way out. I'll turn to the side for you guys so you can see it from this angle as well. Rotate all the way in. And rotate all the way out. Notice that my shoulders are not coming forwards, I'm just rotating through the shoulder. Okay, so that's number one. Then we're gonna do the same motion. We're gonna do the shoulder capsular cars, but we're gonna go from 90 90. Okay, so we're gonna go here. I'm gonna rotate both shoulders all the way down as far as they can go. Then I'm gonna rotate them all the way back again as far as they can go. A lot of this has to do with feeling, right? Feeling the shoulder rotating in the capsule. A lot of times people will compensate by using back, shoulder blade, and neck motion in place of shoulder motion. So we really wanna feel that shoulder rotating in the capsule. So with internal rotation, again, we're not gonna let the shoulders come forward. We're just gonna rotate all the way in as far as we can. With external rotation, we're not gonna extend the lower back. We're just gonna drive those fists back, feel the back of our shoulders. So that was the straight arm capsular car. We had the bent arm capsular car. Now we're gonna go through the full shoulder control articular rotation. We're gonna do these one at a time. I'm gonna start with my palm facing up. I'm gonna come across my body like this to midline. I'm gonna reach over my head. Notice how my hand is rotating. That means I'm getting that good shoulder rotation. I'm gonna come back the opposite direction. Keeping the rest of my body very still, actually radiating a little bit of tension through my abdomen. Again, gluing my feet to the ground, other shoulders locked in. Not using my neck to elevate the shoulder. My shoulder blade is just kind of working with my shoulder. Again, I want you to really focus on feeling the shoulder rotate as we come through this entire motion. Do one more here. Lifting all the way up, feeling that shoulder rotating in the capsule, dropping it back and down. You might hear a little cracking or clunking. That's okay, as long as it's not painful. Good 
Good. And guys, if at any point during these cars, you do feel something called closing angle joint pain, which is, for example, when I lift my arm up like this, if you feel stretching here, that's normal. But if you feel pinching here, we don't want to be going into that closing angle joint pain. So first of all, I would recommend that you get assessed by a professional to have them check that out. Um, you might need some manual therapy, some adjusting and things like that. Um, but you just want to work around those areas, right? So every time we do a repetition, day by day, we're trying to expand that circle, but we never want to push into pain. That's not going to be productive, and that can actually decrease the size of our circle if we, if we continue to irritate the area. So if at any point you do feel pinching, go ahead and skip through that area. Make the largest pain-free circle that you can. We're going to go with the left arm now. I'm going to lift my palm all the way up, rotating around keeping my torso nice and tall. Again, guys, hold a little bit of tension in the rest of your body. You don't want to be kind of moving around with your shoulder. Come back. Every circle is a little bigger than the last, really trying to expand that range of motion. Feel the rotation, feel how the muscles are pulling and pushing together. We'll do one more, palm up to the ceiling. I'm going to reach back and rotate behind me and then come back the opposite direction. Okay guys, so we went through our straight arm capsular cars, bent arm capsular cars, and our full shoulder cars. So your shoulders should be feeling nice and loose. Kind of got a little WD-40 in there, got the cobwebs out. Now we're ready to do our internal rotation, pails and rails. So for this one, what you're gonna do, we'll start with our right shoulder. You're going to lie down on a table, surface, whatever you have. Ideally, you could find something to support your head, but that's not critical. And what you're gonna do is you're going to um, roll over your shoulder like this so that I'm kind of over the head of my shoulder. I don't want it all the way out here like this where my pec is nice and stretched out. We're going to rotate our shoulder. Again, pure rotation, not, not cheating. You find that sort of first barrier where you start to feel a little bit of pushback and we're just gonna hang out here, okay? I just want you to feel the stretch in the back of the shoulder. You shouldn't be feeling any pinching in the front of the shoulder. I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure and cranking down. I'm just kind of letting gravity do the work here. Okay. We're gonna hold this for another 15 seconds. Feeling the back of the shoulder, feeling that rotation so we're not moving anything forwards or backwards, just purely rotating. Now that we've gotten a little bit more comfortable in this position, I'm going to do my pales contraction, which is actually going to be externally rotating. So I'm going to find that end range, I'm going to block it, and I'm going to externally rotate. I'm going to start about 20 or 30%. So right now you should feel the back of your shoulder working. Driving into that hand, driving, driving, driving. Ramping up to 40 or 50 percent. And now from here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually lift our arm off our hand and drive into a bit more internal rotation. That's going to be our rails contraction. So I'm driving down, I'm driving down, continuing to rotate, internal rotation, internal rotation, internal rotation. Good. Then you're going to relax. You're going to find that new barrier. Now with the shoulder, the shoulder is very delicate, more delicate than the hip even. So what we want to do is we want to um, make sure that we're moving just slowly and incrementally. And we before we do our pails or rails, we just want to hang out in that position for a second just to get the shoulder comfortable because we don't want to overwork it, especially if we're in new ranges that we haven't been before. Now that I got that good stretch, I feel a little resistance back into me. I'm going to do my pales contraction. So I'm driving back into external rotation. Again, shouldn't be feeling the pack, shouldn't be feeling the neck, just feeling the back of the shoulder, those rotator cuff uh, muscles, rear deltoid working. I'm gonna go for 20 seconds here. Driving, driving. Now from here, what we're going to do again, we're gonna lift off. It's gonna be a little more challenging than last time. We're gonna to continue to drive that hand down, 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 and that's gonna be our rails contraction. So we're finding more internal rotation. Three, two, one. 
and we're gonna block it right where we're at. So now we're at our third and final barrier. Again, we're gonna hang out here for just a second. And we're gonna start our third pales contraction. So I'm driving up the shoulder. You should again be feeling a pretty intense contraction in the back of the shoulder. I don't like to ramp all the way up to 100% with the shoulder because again, it's, it's a little bit delicate. So maybe I'll be at 60% contraction here. I'm driving back into the hand, really feeling the back of that shoulder working. We're gonna do that for 20 seconds. Again, if you feel any discomfort, just back off a little bit. That's no problem at all. And I'm gonna hit my rails, I'm gonna drive down. I'm not pushing down with my top hand, I'm just sort of following. Put, driving that bottom arm down, down, down to the table. Ramping, ramping, ramping. And I'm finding that new range of internal rotation. Ramp, 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 ramp. Three, two, one, relax. So you can see guys, just from that two minutes of pails and rails or so, I've gained a substantial amount of internal rotation from where I started, right? We're gonna come off nice and easy and we're going to switch sides. So we'll go to the other side of the table so that you guys can see. I'm gonna start with my left shoulder, pails and rails. So I'm gonna be here like this. Again, I'm gonna roll over that shoulder and I'm just gonna find that barrier, All right? So maybe it's right here on me and I'm just gonna hang out there for a second. Again, applying, applying light pressure with that top hand, just kind of letting gravity do the work. Just starting to feel the stretch, feel that area, feel the rotation. I'm not um, pushing this part of my shoulder forwards. I'm just like letting it drop nice and comfortably. Gonna hold this for another 20 seconds. So th for this part of it, for this part of it, just enjoy the stretch. And once we've, once we found that first range that we're gonna start at, we're gonna do our pails contraction, driving back into our hand. So I'm driving, driving, driving. We're gonna look to push this for 20 seconds. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And now I'm gonna do my rails. I'm gonna drive my hand down. Again, top hand's just following. I'm not pushing. Feeling the back of that shoulder, feeling that internal rotation. At this point, you should have a really good idea of what that feels like. Five, four, three, two, one. Found my new barrier again. Take a couple seconds and just hang out here. And pale contraction, drive back into the hand. Feeling a very intense stretch in the back of my shoulder. I'm driving, driving, driving. Again, I'm ramping up to maybe 60%, 70 at most. Ramping, and I go into my rails and I drive down, 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 following with that top hand, really expanding that range of motion of the shoulder, that internal rotation, just using my top hand as a guide. All the work's being done with my rotator cuff on my left side. Good, we found our last barrier. You can see already I've gained a lot of range of motion in my shoulder. We're gonna do our final pales contraction. So I'm gonna push up into this hand for 20 seconds. Push, 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 push. Driving, 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 driving. Feeling the back of my shoulder. Really starting to ramp up. I'm probably about 70% right now. And that's about what I'm comfortable with. Five, four, three, two, and one, and at my last rails contraction, I'm trying to get that hand all the way down to the table. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So this is my final barrier. I'm gonna let it relax. Just hang out here for a couple seconds. You can see I gained a ton of range of motion on this left shoulder. 
And again, I'm gonna slowly externally rotate. I'm gonna prop myself up and we're gonna get ready for our third and final exercise as part of this shoulder internal rotation series. What I like to do is, I always like to start with cars just to kind of warm up the area because the pails and rails can be kind of intense, but you'll get a lot of benefit and range of motion from there. Especially with the shoulder, I like to finish off with something where we can actually use that new range of motion. So I'm gonna show you guys two variations of a, sw a, of a swimmer motion. We're gonna do one lying on our belly and then I'll show you a variation seated that's a little bit easier. And we're gonna go through 10 repetitions here. So I'm gonna start with my thumbs up. I'm gonna rotate my shoulders back. Just go sort of to my glutes. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm kind of ingraining the motor pattern of that internal rotation that I gained through an active motion. This is also an excellent warm up exercise if you're doing any overhead activities, any bench pressing, really activate those rhomboids, those middle traps, and of course, warm the shoulder up. So take your time, go nice and slow, and make sure that you're rotating. So my thumbs are gonna be up in this wide position I'm gonna bring my arms back. And we'll do one more here. You should feel your upper back is on fire. For some people that might that motion might be a little bit difficult to do it like that. So you can just do it standing as well. So I'll, still, I'll show the standing variation where gravity's not uh, putting as much pressure on your shoulder. So I'm just gonna make a Y here. I'm gonna come out just like that. And you know you're doing this right if your upper back's on fire. You can actually add a little bit of a chicken wing here as well, just to get a bit more internal rotation. So let's go through and do 10 of these as well. Again, you shouldn't feel any pain or discomfort. You should just feel the rotator cuff. You should feel the back of your shoulder, between your shoulder blades working really hard. Your neck should be relaxed, so you shouldn't be feeling the upper trap at all. This is an amazing way to warm up the shoulders, especially if you're doing pull-ups, snatching, bench pressing, dips. If you're a martial artist and you're doing striking, great way to get the shoulder blades warmed up. Make sure all the right muscles are activated. We'll go through two more. Again, here I'm chicken wing just to emphasize the internal rotation. I'll show you guys one more from the front. So I'm here, I'm reaching back. I'm not overextending my back feeling that internal rotation and back up. So just to recap guys, we did the three variations of shoulder cars, the straight arm capsule, the bent arm capsule, the full shoulder car. We did the shoulder pails rails. We spent about two or three minutes on each side. And then we finished off with more of a functional exercise, the shoulder swimmers. Of course, what we wanna do at the end of any mobility series is we wanna reassess to make sure that we did a good job. So we'll reassess my shoulder here. You can see I gained a little bit more motion. It also just feels easier for me to move the shoulder because I've done so much internal rotation that it's a movement I've just been comfortable with. Sometimes people are just, they just are sort of lacking the motor pattern to get to that internal rotation. They just need to learn how to fire that area and they'll get it. We'll do this side. Again, pretty good improvement there to the range of motion, but also a big thing you'll notice is just ease of movement. It just won't feel as clunky. It'll feel like a natural movement. So this is a great way, again, to warm up your shoulders before overhead activities, dips, bench press, things like that. It's also something you can do on your off days just to train your mobility. Remember, biological adaptation takes a lot of time. So if you want long-term gains in your internal rotation, you're gonna have to work at this daily for weeks and maybe months, but that consistent work will pay off. You can change the function of your joints by training them. So thank you guys for tuning in and keep an eye on our Instagram, IGTV, uh, and YouTube page where we'll be, we'll be posting more mobility workouts like this. And please direct message us, comment if you have any questions and we're happy to answer. Thank you guys.